For 20 years, infamous kidnapper Franklin Delano Floyd stuck to variations of the same lie about the fate of the six-year-old boy he took from a Choctaw elementary school in 1994. Michael Anthony Hughes had been taken to a safe place, Floyd would say. Floyd would also say the boy was his son, despite what a blood test showed, and he did what he had to do. But from death row in Florida in September of 2014, Floyd finally admitted to two FBI agents what had been suspected all along. He had killed Michael the same day after it became clear his plans to raise the boy while a fugitive weren't going to work this time. For Michael's foster parents, the revelation provided some closure. Ernest and Merle Bean feel Michael, who sings solos at church, is now with Jesus. God has a purpose for everything. He allows things to happen. We don't understand why sometimes, like this situation. He causes other things. I don't think he had a thing to do with Michael being kidnapped, but he allowed it. What reason exactly, we won't know until we see him. When they came out to the house and they told us the situation, and um, in a way it was a relief because we knew that he wasn't being hurt. Um, that, and like I, I said in the letter, that when he took his last breath here on this earth, that he was in the arms of Jesus his very next breath. And so that gave us peace. Anyway, it did me. Yeah. It's a tangled story. In August of 2015, the FBI issued a press release saying a decades old cold case had been solved, that Floyd had told the investigators what happened to Michael Hughes. Floyd had murdered the first grader on the same day he kidnapped him. They were driving from Oklahoma City to Dallas. The youngster was being a typical six-year-old out of control until Floyd shot him twice in the back of the head. Following the FBI's announcement in August of 2015, the foster parents, Ernest and Merle Bean, wrote a letter expressing their thoughts, but only mailed it a few weeks ago to the Oklahomans Nolan Clay. Nolan and our Tim Money sat down with the Beans as they shared their emotions. This whole time, I figured that Michael was dead, that he killed him early on. I figured that right from the start. And and it went right along. It, my view was I would rather him be dead than living somewhere in torment, suffering, right. wanting to come home, couldn't, being a prisoner, whatever. I'd rather him be in the arms of Jesus and with Jesus uh, in heaven than, than going through whatever it was he would be going through because he'd know that he was taken from us. He'd know he was being held against his will. He'd be going through all this. And, and I'd just much rather him be with Jesus. So it was, it was a relief to me to finally figure out, yeah, okay, it was. But it was, it, it, was, it was final. It, so, you know, in a, in a sense that hurt me because it was final. Um, but yet there was the relief there knowing Michael's in a better place. According to the FBI, Michael's mother, Tanya Hughes, was just shy of her 21st birthday on a spring day in 1990 when she was struck by a hit and run driver in Oklahoma City. She died five days later, and her suspicious death remains unsolved. But the investigation into her death led to the discovery of her son Michael's fate. And Tanya's husband slash father was Clarence Hughes, who turned out to be Franklin Delano Floyd, who currently sits on death row in a Florida prison.